mean, how do you ever really know something? By coming and spending six weeks in Kimshaka, do I know really anything about it? It went way beyond just the opportunity of being the first Americans to travel there. People at home will think I know something about Kamchatka, but I won't really. But there are parts that I do know about. The idea started innocently enough. A canoe trip in Kamchatka. I really wanted to try and catch one of those Siberian blue trout. climbed a hill to look at an old abandoned radar station in Nome before I flew from there to Provodinia. It was part of a chain of defense listening stations called the Dew Line in our early warning system of a Russian attack. It's abandoned now. The huge receptors are there. Their presence looms over the top of the mountain pointed at the Soviet Union, pointed at Kamchatka. What was it looking for? What could it really see? As soon as we left the ground, we couldn't see where we were. We couldn't see anything except the gray cloud. I felt my known world break apart the way the ocean does hitting the coast. I was a little nervous flying across the most heavily defended border on Earth. The Russian radar can't see that I'm just a nature writer fulfilling a dream. As a boy, I read a book called Tent Life in Siberia about the first Yankee exploration of Kamchatka. Writing in the 1860s, George Kennan inspired me with descriptions of snow-capped volcanoes, exotic native people, and his canoe journey on the Kamchatka River. I planned to retrace part of the route he pioneered. But first, we had to get to Kamchatka. We were crossing the Bering Straits to Provodinya, a small northern outpost similar to Nome. From there, we plan to use a Russian plane to fly south and west along the Siberian coast. Kamchatka is a mountainous peninsula roughly the size of California, which projects from Siberia towards Japan. As we came to the coast, I got my first glimpse of this foreign land. It was definitely there, and it was definitely Siberia. What little I could see at first looked bleak and threatening. Behind the very stiff and very formal and very military guards was Vasily who was jumping around, up and down, so ecstatic that there he was, here we were. That made me feel I wasn't coming to a farm place. I was coming to meet a friend. I met Vasily Piskov last summer when he visited Alaska. He is the Soviet Union's